Hey y'all, I'm out of Roxbury Park where I work, and I've got a bunch of lumber I need to get rid of, and I also need some fertilizer for my gardens. I gotta start fertilizing them before stuff starts coming in early this spring. So, I figured I'd make a video because I'm gonna try something a little experimental, at least to me. I'm gonna show you how to turn oyster shells and fossils as well as spare firewood into a rather potent fertilizer and soil amender. So stay tuned, we'll see if this works. Uh, I need to get rid of this firewood because I went out of my way two weeks ago to cut all of that firewood because all of my firewood floated away during Irma. And then we had a tree trimming service come out here to get rid of some snags that were getting in the way of the construction. And now I've got to get rid of all of this live oak. But anyway, since I've got to burn all of this stuff, I figured I might as well not let it go to waste. Instead of just burning the stuff and turning it into hot air and carbon dioxide, and then collecting what wood ash I get, I figured I'd use the heat to try and do something else. Here we have some oyster shells that were left over from an oyster roast like two years ago, and instead of, you know, asking anyone where they wanted the stuff, they just dumped it inside of the marsh. Uh, oyster shells are pretty much limestone. They're calcium carbonate. So I'm hoping that if I cook them long enough in a hot enough fire, they'll just turn into calcium oxide. You know, they'll effervesce and release all that carbon dioxide and turn into basically cement. I could just apply this directly as it is, as a limestone fertilizer, but I don't have a rock crusher. And living here in the southeast, nobody has a rock crusher because nobody has rocks. The only rocks here in the southeast are these. This is phosphate rock. This is a type of sedimentary rock that forms underneath the salt marsh, which we have a lot of. That's a tidal river over there. And actually, right there, there's a little cut, and there's actually a fossil bed over there, and that's where all of these came from. While looking for fossils, we generate we find a lot of phosphate rock and you can't really sort it in the river so you have to take it all out and sort it and this is the reject stuff these are bone fragments like say this that are of no scientific value i've got all this phosphate rock i've got 10 gallons of the stuff i gotta get rid of and once again i could just crush this and apply it to the soil and it'd work like that but i don't have a rock crusher and i don't feel like putting the stuff in a big bucket and hitting with a sledgehammer for a couple hours so I figured if I cook it long enough, it should probably break apart into uh, at least a gravel or a sand, and then I can apply it like that. And that the primary purpose of doing that with both of these is to increase surface area, which will allow it to be broken down by microorganisms much faster. I'm basically just going to take these two pots, and I'm basically just going to pile wood around it and burn it. The good part about using wood for this sort of thing rather than an oven is in the process I generate wood ash. And wood ash is actually a great source of calcium. Calcium carbonate and calcium oxide. It also contains a significant amount of potassium. Uh, the one downside of doing that is you lose all of the, pretty much all of the sulfur and all of the nitrogen out of the wood, which you would get if you applied it as a mulch. But you but if you were to do that, you don't get any of the uh, amending properties of the calcium compounds. So that this also incorporates all of the micronutrients that are still locked inside of the wood into the ash, which is then applied to the soil, and that also helps improve it. You're basically just incinerating trees, or incinerating plants to apply on top of plants. And I mean, a plant contains everything a plant needs. So if you grind up a plant and apply it to the soil as a fertilizer, the plant's going to have what it needs. Well, as long as you've got the same plant. Anyway, that's at least my theory, at least. It's worked so far. But I'm not sure... I'm sure this stuff will break down. But I'm not sure how well this stuff will. Now I know what you're thinking. Wow, isn't that a bit overkill? To which my reply is, what's overkill? <laughs> And that's how I start fires with wet wood. Alrighty, it's been about an hour and a half, and as you can see down in there, 
The pots are filling up nicely with charcoal that's burning, so that should keep them nice and toasty. Alrighty, well it's about 5.30 now, so it's been at least five hours, I think. Four and a half, something like that. Fire's going pretty good. Well, I'm about to head home for the day. So I'm just going to let this fire burn out because it rained here like a son of a bitch um, the last couple of days. So I'm not worried about this setting anything on fire. Pots are still in there. They're still intact. They look nice and toasty. So I'm just going to have to let this uh, n naturally cool itself off. And then I'll see what it looks like in a week from now. I'm going to throw the rest of the logs on there and then call it a night. Alrighty, it's been six days, so let's see how we fared. I don't seem to have burned anything down. Well, it looks like both of my pots cracked. That's to be expected. So these are pretty old. I already got the ash off. Let's see what we got. Let's see if this is brittle like it should be. Oh, yeah. That has been uh, decarbonated. Well, at least partially enough for my means. And let's see about the phosphate rock. Oh, yes. Well, my pot didn't fare so well. But the oysters look pretty good. Let's give them a good poke and see if they break up. Oh, yeah. Here's what the phosphate rock looks like. As you can see with some of these, you can definitely tell that they're breaking down structurally. But, still pretty firm. So I don't know how much smashing they're going to need. This was my, the base plate that I had, the thing that I put over the hole in the bottom of the pot. And that was the top, and that was the bottom. I don't know why it's red. It, that looks to me like sandstone. So this is a sedimentary rock, so... Mm. I guess it got uh, baked like a like clay does. Yeah, that just looks like a fine-grained sediment to me. All right, I guess I'll try and crush this stuff, see what I can do with it, maybe make some cement. Well, I've got some various bowls and smashing implements. So that's what the stuff looks like before I get to smashing. And here it is afterwards. As you can see, it's pretty fine. It's, uh, it's uh, about the same consistency as uh, really chunky flour. The grain size is variable. It ranges from tiny gravel to uh, to clay. So it should be sufficient for my needs. And once I mix it with water, it should dissolve anyway. And then this is going to be mixed with sand as an aggregate. So guess now I'll crush this phosphate rock. Really wish I had a something I could use as a mortar and pestle, but the pot's working good enough. Well, here's what it looks like before I start crushing it. And before I started crushing it, I noticed I actually did have a fossil in there. Uh, well, a recognizable one. This appears to be a, uh, a ray slash manta. I um, forget what the term is, but it's uh, their um, equivalent to their teeth. It's a crushing mouth part. At least that's what it looks like to me. So, yeah cool that I saw that before I smashed it. I'll have to look up to see if that's actually what it is, but that's what it looks like to me. Uh, that's about the consistency I want from a phosphate fertilizer. So I want this to be long acting. I want the small stuff to dissolve immediately. And then I want um, uh, a high um, diversity of grain size. Uh, that way this larger stuff breaks down over a longer period of time and it adds phosphorus to the soil during that time. Of course, it won't be as much because it'll take forever for the really big stuff to break down. But I want, you know, stuff between clay, silt, and sand size grains. Of note, when I shake this stuff, I don't know if you can see that smoke coming off of it. 
I can actually smell um, sulfur compounds in there, which makes sense. There's a lot of sulfur deposited in anaerobic um, environments, especially those in the salt marsh, as well as the phosphates that get trapped. So that's actually a good thing as far as fertilizers are concerned, because sulfur is another important um, uh, nutrient for plants, although it's not needed in nearly as high a quantity as phosphorus, but it's still relatively needed. All right, now that I've got the, the calcium oxide compound reduced, then now I have to uh, get some sort of idea of its purity. I'm sure this is not particularly pure because it's got ash and whatnot. It's probably got a decent amount of uh, calcium carbonate still in it because it's been sitting out here for a week or it just wasn't fully converted. So to get a rough idea of its purity, I'm going to slake some of it. And slaking is simply mixing the calcium oxide with water to form uh, slaked lime or calcium hydroxide. And that's what's typically used in cement. If you're going to be making cement, you first have to slake the lime first, which is you essentially mix it with enough water to hydrogenate it. So with any luck, me adding water to this should cause it to fizz and bubble. Let's see. Well, it's actually not effervescing much at all. That tells me that this isn't particularly pure. It should be producing quite a bit of heat. Let me feel it. Yeah, it's rather cold. So that tells me that this is uh, mostly calcium carbonate, carbonate at this point. So it's uh, probably not ideal for uh, making um, cement, but it's still perfectly suitable as a soil amendment. In fact, it's better because now I don't have to worry about it being overly potent and damaging the plants upon application. And there's the mixed fertilizer. This is a uh, a uh, potent pH amender, because it contains high levels of calcium. It also uh, adds quite a bit of phosphorus to the soil over a uh, relatively long duration. And it also contains um, quite a bit of sulfur, iron, and um, potassium, as well as uh, many other micronutrients that are found in the sedimentary rocks in of the phosphate, as well as um, in the wood ash from burning of wood so if you've got uh say you're growing in a relatively nutrient poor compost something like wood mulch or uh a, another mulch made from woody debris uh, you want to apply something like this liberally uh, as well as um maybe some other form of mineral sand to that compost in order to get all of the, the micro and macro nutrients you need in excess because they're going to be missing from a wood mulch. But if you're growing in say garden compost or something like this, you can use something like this sparingly just to improve the soil for relatively picky plants. Or if you've just got a particularly acidic or, or nutrient poor area, that's about it. So. I showed you how to make a, a potent soil amender out of fossils and oyster shells. Get out there and garden. Here's some turtle bones I threw in there. Um, don't ask. And as you can see, they also reduce to um, calcium oxide. See, they just crush. <laughs> 